John Rasmus here. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about karma. Karma exists. Karma is real. A lot of people have really different views on the word karma itself. I'm not going to go off on any dark areas. I'm going to talk about the happy good side of karma. Good karma. Good karma exists. Bad karma exists. This video is going to focus on good, positive karma. If you do good things, good things come back to you. But it's hard to prove. It's not very specific. It's pretty generic. And concerning karma, I believe it is a law in the universe, but a very, very, very difficult to prove law. You can't prove it in a laboratory. It's going to be a law that's going to consist of nothing but anecdotal stories of, oh, such and such happened, and then such and such happened. But let me share one because tomorrow is Back to the Future Day, October 21st, 2017. I did popularize, in my opinion, the concept of October 21st being Back to the Future Day. Obviously, the idea came from the writers of the movie Back to the Future. But I'm the first one who made a video saying, hey... Let's make October 21st Back to the Future Day. Before me, no one has. Uh, here's my ancient video of me suggesting it back in 2010, five years before it was ever celebrated. I'm here to officially declare that from this point forward, this day today, October 21st, should be a day to commemorate, remember, recognize, and celebrate the future. Today is October 21st, 2010. I know, it's not 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, or 2015, but I'm going to celebrate this day and all those days that are October 21st. And when 2016 comes around, I'm still going to celebrate this day. I will look to the past maybe a little bit. Or maybe I can still look to the future. Because I seriously doubt there's going to be flying cars in 2016. Speaking of the writers of Back to the Future, karma does come back to bite you. Robert Zemeckis directed Back to the Future. I believe he wrote some of it claims to have got the idea from such and such high school event and maybe the enchanted under the sea dance was inspired by something he witnessed firsthand but I can tell you the main inspiration for the entire movie or the initial spark which caused that movie to exist is this book right here a 1947 book entitled Back to the Future written by me Burn Stanyland an unfamous guy that never got credit, never will get credit, excepting in a YouTube video like this. I read this entire book front to back. I will be sharing the condensed short version of the book review tomorrow to commemorate Back to the Future Day on October 21st. Well, let's get back to karma. What is karma? My definition of karma is going to vary from other people's definitions. Let me tell you my definition first. When you do good things, you do have some kind of karma scale. You, when you do bad things, you do have a karma scale. It's kind of like a video game. There are video games that feature karma. In Ultima Online, the ancient game which I am a veteran of, I did beta test it in 1997. In the game, when you kill a bunch of people, you turn red and you have negative karma. You have to do a lot of good things to get back to blue. Even waiting in limbo, not doing anything as a ghost, for many days in the game until you're back up to gray and then you have to do good things like give gold to NPCs and do positive deeds until you're back in the blue.
karma in the actual universe, obviously I can't prove or disprove it. I'm just going to be giving you my opinion. Let's say someone steals $1,000 from you, and you never find out who it is, and they never get caught. They think they're scot-free. They're off the hook. Yeah. Thing is, they're not. They have a negative karma rating. Now, what is $1,000 stolen equal in karma land? In the karma karmic calendar, the karmic hourglass, whatever the karmic scales of justice. Humans can't decide that. That's the thing about karma. So if anyone goes around saying, you did that, therefore you're going to get this. That's not karma. That's, that's human man-made laws and punishments. Karma is a cosmic, universal thing. And the universe is going to judge that person for stealing that $1,000. And they are going to be returned with punishment. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Uh, how can you prove they're going to be punished? Uh, you can't. So it's something you either believe or you don't. I personally believe if someone steals $1,000 from you, you never find them. In some way, $1,000 worth of property or $1,000 worth of this or that, or perhaps the anguish you went through because you lost that thousand, they will feel that anguish at some point or another during their life or during their death. I think even in a hundred thousand years, karma doesn't have a timetable like humans. The person that stole that thousand dollars might feel that anguish in a hundred thousand years. So there's not instant karma all the time. Like John Lennon had a song called Instant Karma. I do believe instant karma is extremely rare, but I do believe it is real. And I have one instance of instant karma positively happening to me personally. So my grandmother passed away, and my grandmother told my mom before she passed away, probably on various occasions, my grandma had an office with a lot of pictures of celebrities on the wall, and they were all signed. And they were all authentic autographs. So back to instant karma. My grandma told my mom that, oh, you see that picture of Steven Spielberg signed by Steven Spielberg on the wall? My mom's like, yeah. My grandma said, oh, I'm, I'm going to give that to John. I'm going to give that to my grandson, John. And so she promised that to me. And I'd have, I never knew this information. I never heard the conversation. My grandma promised me specifically an autograph of Steven Spielberg. Because of some dispute in the family, which I was not a part of, and I don't even know the details of. Because of some dispute, I wasn't able to get my signed picture of Steven Spielberg. Apparently someone, I'm not going to name names, this is all about positive vibes and a positive karma story. But someone went off with my Steven Spielberg autograph. Unbeknownst to me. I had no knowledge of it, but when I heard about it, I was kind of sad. I was like, oh, my, she promised me that and I didn't get it? That's too bad, because I actually am a huge fan of Steven Spielberg. I direct things all the time. I look up to people like Steven Spielberg. I think he's a very cool guy. And something happened to me, which made me even respect him more. Bringing this karma, instant karma story to a conclusion, here is the poster that I got signed by guess who? Let's take a look. I'll just tell you right now. I went to, I believe, the 25th anniversary of Back to the Future, and there weren't many showings in many theaters. There was Los Angeles, there was Burbank, and that was it, near me. The closest one was Burbank. So I decided to go to Burbank because I didn't want to go to the Los Angeles one. I thought it would be probably too crowded. So I decided to go to the quieter Burbank theater and I saw a screening of Back to the Future. It was crystal clear. It was the clearest I'd ever seen the movie in my life because clearly they used the best of the best. You could see the details on Doc Brown's shirt that I never knew existed. So here we have the Back to the Future poster that I got after I, I was the first person to leave the theater because I lived, I lived about an hour and a half away from Burbank. I left because I had to drive home. Here is a missile poster that I purchased. I don't know how easy it is to get, but this is the missile poster on the wall of the Cafe 80s. The exact same missile poster, not a replica or reproduction, and not the screen one, but the one from the original company that made it. So that's very cool. I collect things other Back to the Future fans don't collect. 
the actual missile poster from Cafe 80s. But here is the 25th anniversary. I believe it's 25th. I may be corrected as I pull it out. This is the first time I've pulled it out since 2010. So this has been in here for seven years. Signed by none other than Steven Spielberg himself. Steven Spielberg must live close to Burbank. He was excited that the movie he produced was going to be shown in theaters. And he decided to give the theater a number of posters for the attendees. I was the first person to leave. So I was the first person to grab a poster. So I don't know how many he signed. I have to assume he signed all of them. But maybe he only signed a few. Maybe he only signed this one. I don't know. But I have looked and I haven't seen anyone else confirm that he has signed them. I'm going to have to unroll this extremely carefully because I want to keep it in good condition. Okay, it is the 25th anniversary. You know what? It's not unrollable. So I'm going to unroll it on a table and show you the autograph by Steven Spielberg. I want to keep the poster in great condition. I'll put weights on every corner. Here is the poster. Steven Spielberg personally signed it. You know, he's a huge star. He's a huge director in the field. He's someone I look up to. And for him to take the time to sign that autograph, he doesn't even know how much it meant to me because it was instant karma. Because I had only heard about the signed autograph of Steven Spielberg my grandma wanted to give me. I had only heard about it literally. We're talking weeks within the time I got this poster signed by Steven Spielberg. Within weeks. It was literally instant karma. So if you say karma doesn't exist or if you hear people saying that, their definition of it is, might be different than mine. This is concrete proof, in my opinion, karma exists. Karma is real. I collect Back to the Future obscure things. I even collected the astronaut poster. <laughs> from the cafe 80s I tried to collect everything on the wall of the cafe 80s because I, it was my dream to reproduce the cafe 80s it's my lifelong dream to build an exact replica of the cafe 80s okay maybe not my lifelong dream but if I was a multi multi millionaire type of a crazy dream I would build it in the Universal Studios gift shop area outside of Universal Studios it'd be free for anyone to go to I've actually sold off and got rid of a lot of my Back to the Future memorabilia and props, but not this hat. I still have this hat. Universal Studios had to order thousands, who knows, of yards of this cloth. And when they did, they had a lot of leftover. They decided to use it in the gift shop hats. So this is actually the exact same cloth used in the movie, not the screen worn cloth but the backup cloth that they didn't use. Very cool, very awesome. So when you see Mirage caps, which are actually high quality, you're gonna see they're a different color scheme. They're not, they're not exactly the same. The official Back to the Future hats that they sell now, they're not even close to the official ream, and the Mirage isn't even close. I would say the new stuff is a lot different. Tomorrow, a book review of Back to the Future, the book. A book review you've never seen in your life. And a book you've never read in your life. A book called Back to the Future, written by me, Burn Stanley Land, in 1947. Yes, Back to the Future, the movie, is inspired by this book, and I'm going to prove it to you tomorrow. I was going to take photographs of every single page and show the sources, and I am going to make that video a very detailed proving with here are the facts, black and white, take it or leave it. But tomorrow, I don't have tons of time, so I'm just going to talk about what I read and talk about the points that matched up in the movie. And believe it or not, other movies, other TV shows, seemed to potentially have borrowed from the ideas in this book as well, not just Back to the Future. When I found that, that out, I was surprised. So this is one of the unsung books you will never hear about 
and you can't really get it. It's extremely rare. Back to the Future by me, Burns, Danny Land. Book review coming tomorrow. YouTube Rasmus channel. I will be bringing you more Back to the Future related videos. Be seeing you. Until next time, I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus. Be seeing you. Thank you.